Hello and welcome to Hewittown, Alabama. I'm Ken McFarland. I'm your host for Rings, Gears, and Opinions. I'm proud to have this car as our backdrop today. This is a 64 Chevelle that's driven by Neil Bonnet, owned by Butch Nelson, built, engineered, and maintained by this guy, our special guest today, Anthony Artali. We're going to start back in the day. This is, a, I know, a big part of your life, you know, <laughs> one of the biggest parts probably, you know. I know you got a lot of enjoyment and a lot of uh, pleasure, a lot of hard work. And as we were talking earlier before we started, how much time that your wife allowed and was a part of this. Your wife's name is Shirley, and she was always a a big supporter of this race car in your time, right? You're right. Yeah. You, you can't do it without support. Yeah. <laughs> You're gone too much. Yes, you spent a lot of time away, didn't you? Uh, and tell us about uh, in the beginning. I was we were talking earlier, and it was uh, I asked you about being a race fan, you know, because all of us in the real world out here, we were we were all race fans and stuff, but not you. I mean, right out of the box, you went to race a race car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell us about that beginning. Uh, I was working at a tire store, and me and a couple of guys that hung out there. And bought an old jalopy. Okay. Back then, three hundred dollars was a lot of money, and that's what we paid for the car. Mm. And we didn't run it but four, five, six times. Yeah. That just got me started. Got you started. Yeah. And the first race track that you go to back then is where Birmingham. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you, man, you getting you testing my memory now. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably Birmingham. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, that car goes away. That uh, people you were working with go away, and you start working with a, a new group. Or, well, or... I really started something by myself. Okay. Uh, I built a 51 Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. uh, that, didn't, that didn't go well because I really didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And we maybe ran that car a couple of times. And uh, I moved. I moved that car when I bought a house, and I moved that car to my house out of the shop we was working at. And we cut it all up and, and did, and then went to helping people. Okay, yeah. And uh, and then you get tied up. Uh, start with a fifty-five or something yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, it was fifty-five or fifty-six. We run with a guy by the name of Charlie Jones. Yep. Uh, at, at that time, the car was sponsored by, and I don't remember the name of the car lot, but it was sponsored by a man named Tommy Green. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was very involved. Uh, very successful car dealer. Yeah. And yeah. We, we ran that car for a year and won the state championship for that division, which was, wasn't cadet. It was like hobby cars, but it was V8 Chevrolet. And the next year, somebody called me that said they had some money and wanted me to build them a car. Okay. I can't even tell you the name of the guy because I don't remember. Oh. But anyway, me and the guy that was helping me built him a car. I don't think we run that car maybe twice. Mm -hmm. uh, and that went away. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then I got hooked up with Charlie Fox. Tell us about Charlie. Uh, Charlie was a race car driver too. He was friends with Charlie Jones. We got to helping him and built a, built a car with him and run it. And then we built a late model sportsman, which we were probably out of our league. But And Charlie St Jones is still driving the car at this time? Yeah, Charlie okay. Fox driving it. Charlie Fox is yeah. driving. Okay. okay. First place we took the car was to Macon, Georgia. Never seen a racetrack as nice as this place. Really? It was unbelievable for that time. It was all up to date. Wow. Pretty new track, I guess. Yeah. Okay. It was, it was fairly new. All right. Uh, we run in the top five, but we weren't competitive. And people maybe, maybe remember uh, Charlie Bertram. Yeah. Bertram won that day okay. in a 64 Chevelle. So we were already out of the ballpark with a 57. 
Now, where's this Bertram from? Chattanooga. He's from Chattanooga. Okay. He, he was a pretty hot item at that time. Okay. Uh, I may be getting his name wrong. Uh, he was doing the era of Charlie uh, Friday Hassler. Yeah. And him and Friday run all over and run pretty good everywhere they went. Uh, you get back from Macon? Yeah, and we, we ran that car a little while, and we weren't, we weren't competitive at all. Uh, and the guy driving it, he wanted to quit because he was going to buy him a truck and go on the road. Okay. So we made an agreement to buy the car from him. We already owned two-thirds of it. We just had to buy his third. So I brought the car to my house. And then somehow we got hooked up with Lee Hurley. And uh, and Lee Lee lived near you guys. No, no, no. he didn't. Uh, okay, there was only two places in town you could buy parts. You either bought them from Round Man or a place called Taylor Speedsport. Okay, and Lee worked there. Yeah, Lee was working there and working at the Chevrolet dealership too. Okay, everybody that needed a distributor worked on, they carried it to Lee. Okay. Everybody needed a carburetor work on, they carried it to Lee. Okay, so he was the carburetor and distributor man. Okay. Because you couldn't buy nothing off the shelf. Everything, High performance wise, yeah, yeah, that's right. You, everything had to be touched. Yeah, and Lee had the touch and still has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the big deal was a Corvette dual point distributor okay. that he tricked up from there. Okay. I don't even remember what we run for carburetors because that that was a challenge too. There wasn't no wasn't okay. no Elder Brock carburetors around. There wasn't no Holly carburetors around. Right. So you become friends with Lee through that process. Yeah. All right. Uh, he did some stuff for us. And during that time, we was going to let him. Well, well, we actually talked to Bobby Allison about driving the car because Tommy Green knew Bobby real well, and Tommy was still kind of involved with us. And uh, Bobby said, you got to have new ball joints. You got to have this. You got to have that before I'll drive the car. Mm -hmm. Well, we never did get him to drive the car. But we got with Lee, and Lee was going to drive it. Uh, and he started driving by accident. He was he built and maintained a car for Billy Clark. Okay. And Billy worked at U.S. Steel. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he, he actually had a job. Really? And he was on the night shift and couldn't make it. Okay. So Lee said, no problem, I'll drive the car. He never drove in his life. Wow. And the car hadn't been winning. Mm -hmm. Lee started on the rear because that's what they did at Birmingham and won the race. Did he really? And had him hooked. Okay. So he was hooked. Huh. But he'd been building cars for a while. He built, he built and maintained a car for a boy named Marvin Barber. I know Marvin well. <laughs> we just lost Marvin just a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Marvin had a heavy foot. Yeah. Uh, but those cars were all tricked up, too. Okay. Uh, Marvin was a man's man, if nobody knew Marvin. Yeah. I really was. Good-looking guy. Uh, just, I mean, even till his later years, I mean, he was physically fit. I mean, he was just and really just a really good guy, too. I mean, and... Uh, and fought a good bit. Oh, yeah. He, that's exactly <laughs> he another would, part. That's he, correct. He would enter. That's correct, yeah. <laughs> he did, would enter. You didn't want to mess with Marvin Barber. <laughs> he that's, would enter. That, yeah, that's true. Uh, so good. And he had a couple of friends that would back him up. That's so, true, too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. He, he would enter. Uh, he made a trip to New York on behalf of Bobby Allison. Is that right? You didn't hear that story? I know. Tell it to us. <laughs> you know, uh, when Bobby was driving first started in that thing uh maurice petty beat him up one day okay at the racetrack okay maurice was kind of a hothead yeah so marvin and chester and the boy named uh, johnny mckenzie mm -hmm. they go to islip new york when bob when bobby was going running okay and they got even oh did they yeah <laughs> They beat the petties up. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's yeah. the story I get. Yeah. Uh, well, Bobby they're... wasn't involved in it. They handled it all. Yeah. But those were some. Again, those, that's an era of guys or people that uh, 
if you didn't know those guys, you were in bad shape. Yeah, no, to be honest with you, you yeah, were in bad shape. You didn't true. know them. That's correct because uh, they, they uh, kind of reminds me of the guys on uh, Tombstone. You know, <laughs> Earp and those guys. I mean, they were, they were they had a persona about them. You know, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They hung out at a tavern on Bessemer Superhighway. Yeah, was that Dan's? Or one of the other ones? I don't remember the name, but yeah. you, you could find them there most any, <laughs> any night. Uh, all of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, good. Uh, so you meet Lee through this process. Yeah, and uh, he drove a couple of races for us, and then he was going to build a Buick. Yeah. Got, got caught up in wanting to build a Buick. Mm -hmm. And in this process, while he was building this, or trying to build this Buick, I guess some little kid wandered up and said, I can weld. Yes. Yes. Which was Neil Bonnet. Yes. So Lee put him to welding. And then Lee called me and said, I got a little kid that wants to drive, but he ain't got no money and ain't got no car. You got a car. Mm -hmm. And we can change it around where he can run this, what they call back then a cadet division. Okay. So we... He said, I'll furnish the motor because the motor I had was not legal in cadet. So we changed the rear end because you couldn't run a quick change. And we went to racing. So I got this car together and you got you a Hurley motor and got you working on it and stuff. And uh, Neil shows up and gets in the car and y'all go to Birmingham. Where, was it Birmingham? No, the first place we took was we went to Montgomery. Okay. And it, as far as I know, he'd never drove before. Okay. So, uh, and not to get ahead, there was a story about the first motor that Lee puts in the car. Yeah. Tell well, us that part of the story. Well, he built the motor, and, you know, Lee was always last minute. Okay. We're supposed to race Sunday, and we don't get the motor until Friday, Saturday. Okay. So we put the motor in the car, and, and Neil was helping us all do all this stuff. And Lee told us, do not crank that car till I get there. All right. Neil wouldn't have it no other way. Mm -hmm. We got to crank it. We got to crank it. I said, well, he said not to. You know, you're his buddy. He said, don't crank it. Yeah. We cranked it anyway. In the process of cranking it, it run fine. We cut it off. Didn't pay no attention. Lee built a trick carburetor. Okay. He had turned a two-squirter into a four-squirter. Oh. And the float had stuck. And it was steady dripping gas in the motor. Wow. So when he got there, he knew we had cranked it because mm -hmm. it was hot. Right. I told you I'm not to crank this thing. He tried to turn it over, wouldn't turn over, locked oh. up, locked up. Was he happy with you guys? <laughs> no, he was not happy. <laughs> he was not happy. <laughs> uh, I was, well, 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 you know. What are you going to do? You done, you done done it. <laughs> yeah, it's done. A, yeah. It's done. He said, well, we're going to take this motor out, and I'm, we're going to my house and get a motor put back in it, and y'all going to run that race tomorrow. Wow. I said, all right. Uh, if you got a motor, he said, well, it's a 327, but it'll get the job done. Okay. So we pulled that motor out, put that motor in, got through late that night. Sunday we load up and we go to Montgomery. Uh, first race first race yep he run the heat race pretty decent and then we got to the feature and he spun out three different times wow <laughs> the gear in the car was for that 302 uh, it, it wasn't for no 327 so it was sailing him down in the corner straightaway speeds were a little too great <laughs> yeah, instead of backing off he's just running it down in there but we still finished third uh, Y'all all pretty excited about that. Yeah, we were excited, and, and he was excited. Uh, we, we rode back in the truck, and he talked all the way home. Did he really? <laughs> he shut up all the way home. So, so this that, is, this, yeah, he's very excited then. Yeah, I can this, understand this, why. Yeah, this is how it started. And, okay. Uh, I think it was a couple of weeks before the next race at Birmingham, and by then Lee had the other motor put back together, and we put it in the car. Okay. And we just started racing. And yeah. how did do you – First few races, I mean, you won pretty good, pretty soon yeah, after starting. Yeah, right? we we won uh, in that car pretty good, pretty good amount. I don't remember how many times, but uh, we won the 
track championship at Montgomery and should have won the track championship and the state championship because this was all NASCAR back then. Right. But uh, they parked us one night at Birmingham. What, what caused that parking? The rear end. Oh, okay. You were leaking? No, oh. we had a – we took the center section out of a quick change and bought a piece that replaced us and made it a floater just a – Okay. They decided after a whole season, half most of the season was over. That yeah. was illegal. Oh, so you got parked and had no way to get the car ready. <laughs> no, and you they, were we were at the track. Yeah, it's, you were there. You were yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, it was over. And and it was really no no easy way to change that. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and they, they got on to us one time about the wheels. Okay. Uh, one night we had won. And somebody protested the wheels because back then it was supposed to be nine inch wheels. Okay. And Evans come down there raising sand, and I said, Evans, you know the wheels are 10 inches because I told you they were 10 inches when the season started. Right. I wasn't going to buy new wheels. I had 10 inch wheels. Right. And you said, okay. Yeah. And then it wasn't. Then it wasn't okay. okay. Yeah. But they let that slide because I confronted him about getting approval to do that. Yeah. Okay. But they didn't let the screw in slide. So you're you you racing uh this is your car. And and yeah. And you got Bob Gwinnett. Yep. Yeah. And he's he's uh y'all become friends how? Through Charlie Fox. It was Charlie's brother in law. I got you. They live right. next door to each other and okay. he helped us on Charlie's car and when Charlie quit he started helping us on this car. Okay. Um, so and you and Bob were state I mean, you guys were just both of you just poured your heart and souls into these race cars, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he worked for a vending company, is yeah. that right, as a mechanic? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I think when you – we were talking earlier, you said he was a, a cabinet maker. He had been – he'd been building cabinets for a cabinet shop. So his ability and his skills that yeah. he'd done there yeah. – go ahead and share that yeah. with us. He he could he could fabricate anything from what he learned in the cabinet business. Wow, okay. So – uh, that was a big help. Uh, he made he can make templates for stuff that he learned in the cabinet business. Yeah, so that helped you, you guys. Uh, and and he was a great mechanic because that's what he done for a yeah, living. So, so. Uh, it, it was best of all worlds, really. Right. And uh, he, and he was willing to to give up his time and stuff just as you were, and you guys just I mean again just poured your heart and souls into this this racing. We didn't think there was nothing else. <laughs> wow, that's pretty amazing, isn't we, it? We thought that's all there was. That's right. Yeah. So and to, and to find for you to find somebody like that that was willing to work alongside you during those hours. I mean, because again, you couldn't have done it by yourself. No, you know no, what I'm saying? No. no. And you, you had to have somebody and to find that person and for you to be like minded and work so well together. That, that was, that's the real trick. That's the real trick. I agree with that's you. That's the real trick is, yeah. is getting along. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, you and Bob are, and you're, you're funding most of this out of your pocket. Me and, me and a boy named Eddie Brasley was funding it out of our pocket. And tell me about Eddie. I don't, uh, uh, he worked with me at uh, Seco Corporation. Okay. He was going to school to become an engineer. He finally graduated. Uh, uh, and he was paying part of the bills, and I was paying part of the bills. Okay. And, and at times, we'd, we'd float a $1,000 90 day note. Just I, I'd get 1000 for 90 days, and when it came to, he'd get 1000 <laughs> We'd pay that off, and we'd swap that back and forth. Now, how long did Eddie stay involved with you? Not long after that. Uh, okay. So is that the, is that when things really got tight for you guys? No, it uh -oh. really didn't get tight then. Uh, so we when we they had a rule back then if if you ran really good in cadet you couldn't stay there okay all right yeah you had to move up okay so we we had converted that 57 into a 56 and we turned around and converted it back to a 57 put the quick change back in it okay and uh lee built us a motor probably a 327 back then i don't i don't remember I just remember the first time we run a 350. Okay. You know, that's when they first come out. Okay. Uh, and we ran it, I think, in Macon, Georgia. <laughs> okay. Again? Yeah. We we took an untried motor 
that far to, to race. How did that turn out? Not good. Not good. So Lee had built a pan, and the bottom fell out of the pan. Wow. Oh. Because the engine had no way to breathe. Wow. Oh. That's when he come up with putting breathers on the valve covers. Is that, that okay? That three fifty. Seen it for years. That three fifty didn't have no way to breathe. Okay. So the pressure got so bad, and it forced the bottom of the pan out. Wow. So that wound up to be a bad trip. But after that, he he fixed it. He knew he knew what to do, and then we didn't have no more problem with that. Okay. But we probably had one of the first three fifties around. Okay. Uh, and had good success with it. We, we couldn't win, but we'd run in the top five. Okay. Uh, and we ran all over. Uh, yeah, you were telling me you went to Maryville, Tennessee, yeah, to, uh, uh, all over. Yeah. Uh, I remember one weekend we ran uh, Friday night here, Saturday night in Montgomery, Sunday we run a 300 lapper in Maryville, Tennessee, and Monday we run, it was on a uh, Memorial uh, Labor Day weekend. Yeah. We went to Greenville, South Carolina and run. Wow. All I mean, that in <laughs> four days. And, and come back Monday and went to work Tuesday morning. Unbelievable. I mean, again, that, people don't understand the hours <laughs> and the time that you guys, I mean, you you guys lived it 24-7. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. I know during my racing years, I mean, it was, you know, we'd go race Friday night, Saturday night, somewhere maybe, you know, and that was a really a tough gig just to run Mobile Right, Pensacola, and then yeah, Mobile. That, yeah, we didn't. That's that's something we didn't. We didn't run a lot of Mobile and Pensacola because it was just too far at the times they run for us to work a job and race and get there. So yeah, and and we had Birmingham and Montgomery. Yeah, so, yeah, and so you, anyway, you guys are racing. You and Neil are y'all doing your thing and and doing pretty good. And then money's get tight. Well, we for, we, we, we I got laid off for one thing okay. that didn't help. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we had rented a shop over by Village Creek off Lum Avenue because we were wanting to build another car, and I, my basement wouldn't handle all that. Okay. So we were in the process of building a 64 Chevelle when all this took place. So uh, we finally just said the, the 57 wouldn't get it done no more. Right, so, so we we finally just had to park it because I was out of money and yeah. How far along were you in the build of this '64 Chevrolet? It was completed except for putting the fuel cell in it, the rear end in it, and the A-frames on it. Okay, now I want to stop one second and go back to this paint scheme we got here. This this paint scheme came about how how I mean because it it was with you. Oh yeah, the cadet car. Neil yep. Grove was just like that with That's right. number one on it. Yeah. So how did this paint scheme come about? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that. Really? I really don't. It's because uh, it's still it's classic <laughs> look. I mean that, I mean everybody can tell you this is just a classic look of a race car, I, you know. And and it may be from Lee. I don't I don't remember how we come okay. up with that paint scheme, but yeah. uh, so or, or I saw it somewhere. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so things have gotten tight situation. And uh, you have an acquaintance by the name of Butch Nelson, and uh, you know each other. And then uh, tell us how you and Butch came to be. And just talking to him, I'd stop by his car lot on the way home from work after I got another job, and we'd converse, and he'd tell me how unhappy he was with his racing deal. Yeah. And uh, he wanted to do something different. Yeah, I said, well, I got a plan. If you want to do something different, I, now, I, I got most of the stuff. I just lacking money. I'm a, I'm gonna pick here just a minute. So, really, in the back of your mind, getting there, you'd already thought about proposing this to Butch. Yeah, yeah. So you're sitting there knowing I, Butch is doing okay and got some money to spend and willing to spend. Well, I knew he'd been spending a bunch. Right. And so it was not getting no results. Yeah. So, so you know, you got a good race team. <laughs> you got the people, and you so you pitched this deal to Butch. Yeah. And how, how does he take well, it? Well, he first pitched me by he was wanting to do something different. I got you. Yeah. And I told him, well, we can do something different because I got the stuff to do it different with. I just don't have the money. Yeah, okay. And he says, because we, we all know Butch, yeah. you know, so I, I want to hear his response. <laughs> I don't remember what his response was, but he said, hey, <clears throat> we can do this. Okay, good. I, I'll put up the money, whatever it takes. You just tell me what you got to have. Okay. So does he acquire your stuff? You donated your stuff to this well, race team? 
my theory was all, I just wanted to race. That's right. Okay. <laughs> you know? So I, I told Butch, we'll put a value on my stuff, and I don't want the money till okay. we quit. Wow. Okay. When we when we dissolve, I want to be paid. Okay. He said that's fine. Yeah. So I think we put a twenty five hundred dollar value on it. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was a bargain. I, I feel yeah. like that was a bargain. Just well, for- I had trailer, two yeah. cars. I don't think I didn't have a one motor back then. Okay. I, I don't think. Okay. But anyway, he said that's fine. Tell me what you need or get what you need, and I'll pay for it. Now tell me about. I, I'm going to stop. The Henry in this part, but Butch kind of Henry's kind of a solid partner, correct? I mean, Henry is unique. Okay, uh, he was a partner that went along with whatever Butch wanted to do. That's what I understood all those years. It didn't matter it, whatever it, Butch said. Whatever Butch said, that's it, what we're going to do. And Butch even explained to me sometimes that if he needed a part chased or or something, whatever Henry is more than willing to do whatever it was to help maintain that. I wasn't much involved in the in the cup deal that they tried to do uh-huh. it was during the time my son was in the hospital getting uh, open heart surgery so they had put this deal together they bought a car from bobby allison an old dodge yeah and uh, got to the racetrack with it and and the petties were good about helping people that were running chrysler products okay and uh they they come over and looked at the car and said, Neil, this carburetor ain't never going to work. Okay. And this manifold's never going to work. Mm-hmm. We got stuff at the shop, but we don't have it on the truck. Henry drove up there to Random, North Carolina and brought that stuff back. That's maybe the story I was telling you because <laughs> Butch was just – Butch always appreciated Henry and his willingness to support him, you know, all through the years. It was – every time – Henry's name came up. Butch was just like you said, whatever you need, whatever you want to spend, whatever you want to do, do it, do, do it your way, Butch, and 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 did. Yeah, yeah. It, it never, I never seen him question anything about money or yeah, whatever it cost, it cost. Yeah, we good. So, uh, so you get you guys get the '64 Chevelle put together, right? Yep. And uh, right out of the box, y'all go to Birmingham. And win. And win. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> and like you said, Butch Butch had not had a lot of success in his career. So with this victory <laughs> and your guy, he was he was on fire. Yep. Yeah. Ready to go. What do we do next? What do we do next? Yeah. Uh, and uh, we decided uh, the season was about over. And we decided to take this car to Nashville, by that big race to Nashville, 200 lapper. Okay. And we do. And the left front spindle breaks about halfway through the race, and it demolished the car. Did y'all qualify pretty well and was yeah, running pretty yeah, decent? Yeah, yeah. We, we were running top five. Okay, but again, we're talking about back in the day. You got Harry Gant, yeah. Butch Lindley, uh, you got a, Sam Ard. You, you got a bunch. You got a bunch, yeah. You got a bunch. Yeah. I mean, and they was the real deal. Yeah, I mean, that was – All the, of them were the real deal. Yeah, every one of them was capable of winning at any weekend, any time. And, and little be knowing to us dummies, because we hadn't been in the racket so long, mm-hmm. they had tires nobody else could get. I got you. Yeah. So, Lindley and Gant was on a Firestone deal. Okay. They had tires you couldn't buy. I got you. Yeah. So, we figured that out down the road, but we didn't know that then. I got you. So you so you crashed this car, demolished it, demolished, and it's 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 done. So you come back and you're getting ready to find uh, another chassis. Or another frame because you were running stock frames back then, and you and you, what do you do then? We we put a convertible frame under it because we thought that would hold up a lot better than this little old channel they had that we plated. Yeah. And started building the car from there. Of course, the roll cage and all would fit. You just had to move it over. And during I'm gonna stop during this process with this spindle breaking. You're talking to, again, I think you shared with me the other day, Lee Hurley tells yeah. you that Lee, it's not Lee, a spindle problem. Yeah, he says, you got to figure it out. It's an A-frame problem. Wow. So we spent two or three, four weeks playing with A-frames Yep. until we got what we was looking for. Okay. Put them on the car, and, and we bought, I made Butch order some spindles from Hutchinson Pagan. Okay. Short track spindles. Yep. 
to forget about breaking one of them, you ain't going to break it. Okay. And we finished the car and take it to Birmingham. They had a practice day before the season started. Yep. And we backed the car off the trailer. Neil got in it and made three or four laps, and we was below the track record. Wow. Right out the gate. And I said, we've practiced enough. We'll race tomorrow. Yeah. So, and then it just started from there. And you guys are just uh, really, really strong most everywhere you go. But Montgomery was really. Oh, we dominated Montgomery. You, you managed. That was that was y'all's track. Yeah. Yeah. In the. Uh, we only went down there when it was a big race that paid money. Okay. And I, and I remember one night we went down there and it was threatening to rain. And and Harmon was the promoter. Okay. And he was the biggest con man alive. Okay. And so he comes out there and says, hey, he had advertised he was going to pay 1000 to win a 100 lapper. He come out there and was telling us, uh, I can't pay that 1000 And if I pay the 1000 Everybody else ain't going to get much. Mm -hmm. and, and Butch says, I come down here for the 1000 I don't care what second and third pays. Wow. That's what he told me. Really? He said, well, that's what y'all want to do. That's what we'll do. So everybody agreed to race for the 1000 Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and we won it. And you won it. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it got, we dominated at Montgomery so much that we got to where me and Bob wasn't even going to Montgomery. We'd Rick? send Butch in the car, and that's it. Is that right? Why were y'all staying home? Tell, I don't have some working on something, I guess. Okay. Working on another car to get ready. To, okay. I, I don't know, but we didn't. We didn't go one night. Yeah. And uh, he didn't win. Oh. He didn't win. <laughs> this is why he didn't win. I asked Bush. I said, "What happened?" He said, "On ninety-eight lap, the fur gear store up. Oh my! He just quit." He said, "Hell, we had a straightaway on him." Huh. So. Because Bush didn't work on the car, I told him you ain't got to do nothing. Tires is on it. Qualifying race. Wow. Ready to go. And he led most of the race till the spur gears tore up. Wow. Back then they were having problems with spur gears. Yeah. So I am just one of them deals. Yeah. But we'd have won that race. Wow. So you guys continue to race for what? A couple of years. A couple of more years there and stuff. Tell me about uh Neil and it's it's well known at times about Neil getting frustrated and uh you were talking earlier about he didn't come by the shop and and help out very much because you're in bob's pace was not hit to his pace you know we were slow yeah methodical we were slow yeah. i don't know about the methodical but we were slow yeah and it, it just drove him drove him crazy correct and he didn't like change yeah and we were always trying to change something or figure something else out or do something different yeah and he didn't he didn't like messing with Wanted, wanted to keep what he had. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Don't mess with it. It's right. good. Yeah. Well, it's good today and it's good tomorrow, but it may not be no good next week. Yeah. So you got to keep trying to hunt something. Yeah. And so after the 64 Chevelle, you guys, uh, what moves you to the 68 model? Well, it was trying to get the weight down for one thing. Okay. And then 68 was coming along and making the 64 body style kind of be lit up. Obsolete. obsolete yeah yeah and we knew the car was too heavy when it's come out see it wasn't no right weight rules back in the day okay yeah and what people couldn't figure out friday has to come down here with a 55 chevrolet and murdered them really for like 10 or 12 weeks in a row and they finally put a bounty on him anybody beat him got 500 hundred dollar bonus well they still couldn't beat him but friday had figured out the lighter you get them, the faster they go. Okay. And just before they ever had a thought about a scale. Yeah. Nobody had a scale. Really? Nobody so. thought about it. So was he running? What, what do you imagine he was running for a frame? I know they're still. I'm sure it's 55 frame. Okay. So yeah. But he just, just uh, he, lightened it up. He took a torch and melted all the lead out of the joints. Oh. And he, he skinned the car down till it was hardly nothing. Wow. And this is before I was racing. Uh, I was spectating in because I. I didn't have a car at the time. Yeah, but uh, he was killing them. Yeah, and, uh, and we we finally figured out it's all about weight. Yeah. So all right, you're starting to build the '68 Chevelle. Now go back to the Pete Hamilton story. What year was that? Was this for the '64? Yeah. All right. So Pete Hamilton. No. 
Was it was six four? All right. Yeah, we we were pretty dominant at Birmingham, and uh, Tom Glore decided uh, he was going to pay Pete Hamilton to bring a car down that was designed and built by the Petties. Okay. It was so illegal; it was unbelievable, and he tried to make it. He come down there. Tom Glow was a fair guy, but this deal here got a little out of hand, mm -hmm. and everybody was raising hell. And he said, "Well, wherever Pete finishes, if he wins second, I'm gonna pay second, first place money." Okay. So he got everybody to go along with it. All right. But my little driver couldn't figure this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> We'd lead a little bit, and when Pete wanted to pass, he'd just run up there and pass us. Right. He'd buy, he was trying to make a show out of it. The car right. was so superior. Yeah, he had he had to make a show out of it. Yeah. Okay. And, and Neil thought he could race with him. Right. Really thought, yeah, I, I can race with this guy because he'd back off and Neil would catch him. Right. Finally, Neil bounced it off the wall in three and four, and we brought him in, put two tires on it, sent it back out, bounced it off the wall again, come back in. <laughs> what are we gonna do? He said, "I can't turn the wheel no more." Oh, really? <laughs> it wore out. <laughs> just wore the car out. It just would not stop. He just couldn't turn. He said, "I, I can't turn the wheels no more." And yeah. Lee was gonna get in the car. I said, "They, we've had enough. We want, yeah. You know, and yeah. I need to go out there and tearing up some more stuff." So that just shows the determination that Neil had that was not going to give up. And you know, sometimes you can't win. Right. You That's just have to settle for second. Right. So that was a. All the bad things I remember real well. <laughs> that was a bad night. Yeah, I got it. That you. was a bad night. It's uh so uh you and Butch and, and uh Bob and uh you guys just continued building this sixty eight Chevelle and you you have a success with the sixty eight as well as you did the, well, the well, sixty four? We, we had some problems with uh, we carried both of them to Nashville for that big race. And the '68 had never been never been raced. Right. And at the time, we was having problem getting radiators. Okay. So everybody went to this little Corvette radiator, mm -hmm. and was having trouble getting good oil coolers. Okay. So I put that Mickey Mouse radiator in there and a Mickey Mouse oil cooler, and the car run hot early in the race. Okay. But uh, we carried two cars up there. Roy Milligan drove the 64. And he he drove a car a lot different than Neil. Right. He run off the corner. He didn't run down in the corner. He run off the corner. Okay. And while we was getting him ready to drive the car, because he'd never drove it before, he kept saying the gear ain't low enough. Gear, and I, I put the gear in it. We always run with Neil. Right. So we changed the gears a couple of times, and it was really low. Mm -hmm. And at this time, Chevrolet rods were bad. Okay. This particular motor had the best rods money could buy. Mr. Rod had just come out. Mm -hmm. So I figured we'd be all right even if we was turning it too much. Back then, 6,800 was about it. That's all you could turn. You, you turn it more than that, and you got, you're looking for trouble. Right. So Neil pulled out early because it run hot, and uh, Roy's just trucking right along, running second and third. Looked like he was on a Sunday drive, and this is one of them deals where I made a mistake. Okay. And I think it was a 400 lap or a 300 lap. We pit about halfway through, and I put Neil in the car. Oh, you did? Bad move. Yeah, because the, uh, the RPM situation become Bad dynamic. move. And we're telling Neil, take it easy. We're, you know, the radios back then were on the board. Take it easy. Right. Because we had to race one. Yeah. We pitted and got tires and gas and was leading the race. And everybody else had to pit. Right. All we had to do was just... Take it easy. You blow the motor up. Wow. 
So how did Roy take getting removed from the car? Was that was he okay with it? You think? Uh, I don't know whether he was okay with it or not, but <laughs> like had, I said, I called the shots, and it was right. a, it was a mistake. I, I should have left, yeah. left him in the car. Yeah, because you, 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 you think you still could have won even with Roy uh, in the yeah, car. Well, yeah, well, he was he was there. He was driving his pace. Yeah, and his right. pace was driving in easy, driving off fast. Right. Yeah, and it was working. Right. But that's my mistake. So. Several times during Neil and Butch's y'all's thing, uh, you were telling me one story about Bur uh, Birmingham one night that Neil got frustrated and quit. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us about that. That was our major blow up. Okay. Uh, we had just got back from Maryville, Tennessee, winning the biggest race we'd ever won for money. Uh, left there with about three grand. Wow. Which back then that was that was large. Yeah. It was paying lap money and 2000 to win plus the lap money. But we beat the car up pretty good. So that week, me and Bob got the car ready to run fairgrounds. We show up. He shows up. He's working on some kind of cup deal to drive the Talladega. Mm -hmm. This is the Talladega weekend. And uh, on Talladega weekend, they ran 325 lappers. In Birmingham, you start on the back if you're up in points. So he started in the back in that 68 and run up to third or fourth and pulled in the pits. He said the oil needed changing. Wow. I, I said, well, if you think the oil needs changing, have at it. Okay. So he changed the oil. We go out there to run the next feature. He does the same thing again. Gets up to third or fourth and pulls in pits. Flush, Butch was frustrated now. Right. He told me he load the car up. I said, well, he said, if he's going to keep doing that, we're wasting our time. Right. So we loaded the car up. So things, like any relationship, yeah. everybody's trying to get where they're trying to get, doing what they're trying to do. Yeah, and, and we'd had we'd had instances before and had meetings, and everybody got calmed down. And Right. So, so uh, Butch, describing Butch and, and Neil, we know Neil's kind of got uh, strong-willed, really, really pushing hard for where he wants to be. And Butch is kind of laid back to a point, but when Butch gets to that point, in my opinion, he's uh, there. He's there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's stuck. And, and, and that night he was there. Yeah, he was uh, there. And, and uh, it seems like to me he's just, when he gets there, he's like, Loaded up. There ain't no more question. There ain't no more talking about it. There's well, it was nothing. His car. They, his car, and he's trying to set a, a president, and, and don't want to go back to where y'all have been in a few other meetings or whatever else. So that all dissolves at that point, and and y'all are separated. All right, and then you begin to look for other drivers, and who's well, the see? We had Roy was helping us along. Okay, and driving the other car sometimes. Okay. So. Uh, he he got he started driving the car. Okay, we didn't have a whole lot of success. Uh, I don't know why, but we didn't. Obviously, he he was fairly talented driver. He, he well, he was trying to maybe do too much because okay. he knew the reputation that Neil Big had in the car. So that put that put him in a pressure situation. Right. Which he wasn't in at Nashville. He wasn't in no pressure situation. Right. He just yeah. driving. So, so uh, Roy drives for y'all for another. No, not long. It not didn't long. last two or three months. Okay, all right. Uh, and then we tried Mater, and that didn't last but a couple of months. Yeah. And then Butch and Neil got back together. Okay. And we're gonna run the big race in Nashville. How do you think that got resolved? What do you what, what do you what do you suspect happened? Well, it it, it kind of started over money. Okay, Neil. Was, uh, everybody was volunteering their time and, yeah, and stuff. Nobody was time. nobody was ever getting paid for anything. That's right. And Neil's and, and before we had this split up, mm -hmm. about a couple of months before, Neil wanted to be paid. Yeah. And so Butch talked to me about it. And I said, "Well, if he gets paid, we get paid." Right. I mean, that's just the way it is. Right. I mean, I'll work for nothing as long as he'll work for nothing. Right. But. Yeah. But, again, you, you guys are ones that are 
spending 40, 50 hours a week working on this race car. That's right. Right, okay. So uh, he started paying us something. I forget what the percentages was, but uh, okay. all this all this come about by the two Allison brothers. Okay. Because we were beating them like a drum. Okay. And they're telling him, y'all not be driving for nothing. Uh, okay, yeah. And right. They were pushing the issue. Yeah, right. Um, uh, and then he's got aspirations to go into cup racing. and. Well, we'd already tried to cup, you know, when that Dodge, Butch bought a Dodge. And, yeah. Uh, I didn't have anything to do with it. And I wasn't even talked to. They didn't even talk to me. They just bought it. Right. So, okay. Uh, and you were going through the situation at that time with Chris and yeah, all that. Yeah, so uh, you were, you were really and, preoccupied and, with with that and stuff. And and. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, he knew where he wanted to go. Yeah. Okay. And he was hunting the shortest way to get there. All right. So anyway, they get back together and how you. Uh, so Butch comes up with a deal and everybody gets a percentage of the winnings and whatever. So that's that's how this deal gets put back together. Yeah. Okay. So then you show back up and you're ready to race. We go to Nashville, and uh, I think Neil was needing money pretty bad mm -hmm. because uh, we we had Bobby's radios even, and he was telling Butch we were running in the top five, and he said, I'm not going to push this car hard because something's wrong with the rear end. Okay. So he finished second or third. And then we took that car to Pensacola, not – Taking the rear end apart. And checking it. <laughs> Another mistake. Yeah. And we wind up having to put a rear end in it down there. Wow. So what he was telling you was correct. <laughs> yeah. Y'all didn't heed the warning, and you didn't get the rear end changed out, and ended up at the racetrack having to Put a rear battle. end in it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, we never had any success at Pensacola at all, even though we were the fastest car there two times. Yeah, one time for the Derby, I remember y'all yeah. guys led like almost a, a lot of it and was right to the end and spur gears again if I, uh, yeah, or something in the rear. We just never had any luck at Pensacola, even though we had the fast, fastest car because we sat on the pole there twice. One time broke the track record when we first carried that 68 down there. Wow. All right, Anthony. We just want to talk about this 64 Chevelle, you guys, in the beginning. Tell me how this here comes about with the 64 Chevelle. You're... You're racing the 57 and all that kind of stuff, and everybody's moving to the 64 Chevelle, yeah. and you start building this car in your basement, correct? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And uh, you're pretty well along when you and Butch decide to get together. What number, where does this car here fall in the sequence of these cars here, you think? Second or third, probably, as far as? This, this was probably the second one that me and Bob built from the ground up. Okay, yeah. The 57. There wasn't much chassis work done on a 57 because there wasn't nobody smart enough to figure, <laughs> figure that out. Figure that out. Yeah, so right. we just run a regular 57 yeah. Chevrolet with leaf springs. Okay. And, and that's when I knew we was on a bad deal uh -huh. because them leaf springs had to be worked on about every three weeks. Every you had to carry them to Birmingham Spring and get them rearched. And, uh, yeah. and after I seen Burton's car with them coil springs under it, yeah, I said that's the ticket because you can adjust some coil springs. Yeah, you bind them up or whatever, and then they're, they're and then it got to where people was manufacturing them coil springs in California. Okay, wow. So, all right, what do you what do you think about when you see this car nowadays? Just all the all the hard work or all all the all joy, the, all the fun I had with all it. the fun you had with. I had it. a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, that's uh, we called it fun. Yeah, that's right. A lot of work involved, but it was that was. Fun to us. Yeah, it is. Well, you had a great legacy with this car. And, you know, I've, we've, we've had this car. I bought this car from Butch probably about 10 years ago and stuff. And it was an honor for me to have it and stuff. And, oh. you know, uh, and when I got the chance, you know, this car stayed around a long time without your, you and Bob's name on it. Yeah. That's one thing I wanted to first do. We, uh, we carried this car to Bristol. Yeah. Wow. Twice. Yeah. The first time we carried it there, they called a race off. Yeah. This is an interesting story because Dale had never been on a quarter mile. Okay. So we left Bristol and they was running a race in Huntsville on Sunday. This race was supposed to be on Sunday. Okay. So when they postponed it, we left there and went to Huntsville. All right. 
I never wanted to run a quarter mile because I knew what it was all about. Carrying cars. Beating and banging. Yeah. All right. Just a natural. So y'all got a nat y'all got a hospital. We go to hospital. Okay. I don't think we won, but he went on right up there with him. Is that right? Yeah. It's uh so that started Thursday night racing at Huntsville. Is that right? <laughs> So then was racing Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night when Montgomery was running. Wow, man. Just to maintain a car and get it to the racetrack th during that week was had to be. Was yeah. Short week. Short week, yeah, that's right. But if, if we raced Saturday night at Montgomery, yeah. me and Bob was at the shop Sunday afternoon unloading it and getting everything ready for Thursday night again. Yeah, and that's what you said. A lot of guys race, they, they – they sorted their, their, they didn't work on them like you guys did. <laughs> you guys worked on them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, that's what made much, the difference. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Pretty much. Good. Yeah. Thanks but again. That's what we love to do. We, I know. We had a good time doing it. Again, thank you for taking the time with me today. It means a lot. And overall, you and Neil are, and, and Butch are back together and you're running the deal at Nashville. And, and, yeah. and how much longer of, are y'all together as far as a good race team? Not much longer. So that was, like anything else, when it starts getting cold, it just kind of just, it's hard to turn it back around. Well, he uh, he built his own car yeah. to run the cup. Who's helping him on that? <laughs> Basil Nook was helping him a little bit, but he worked for somebody else and was getting paid to work for Dygard. So okay. his help was limited. And I, I really don't know who was helping him on the car. He built the car when he was driving for Bobby Allison. Okay, so he, yeah. In, in Bobby's shop. So as y'all's deal cools off, he begins to migrate toward Bobby Allison's shop. Correct? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what is your career like at that point? What are you doing? You Are you we're, starting? To... We're, we're, we're racing now and then with Neil. Okay. Because Neil was gone a lot with this cup car. Okay. Was that good with you? I mean, was that where you wanted to be? Were you getting tired? Or Yeah, well, my Bob was getting tired. Bob was getting tired. Bob yeah. was 10 years older than me. Okay, yeah. So he's getting and, tired. And he's getting wore out. So y'all been at it, what, seven, eight years probably? Yeah, yeah about, at, at about least. That, yeah. yeah. And he was ready to hang it up. Okay. And then we was running just part-time. Okay. Uh, but. But still keeping the car up, you got everything fresh, you got everything ready. When Neil comes back and wants to race, I mean, you guys have had the time to prepare the car, and yeah. it, it's sitting there as a fresh, good hot rod. In the, in the meantime, we build another car. Okay. We build a Pontiac Tempest. Yes, I've heard about this car. <laughs> Tell us about this car. We built it to run short track. Okay. And uh, Why do you go to the Pontiac? What, what brings that about? Different. Different. Yeah, okay. Just different. And this car's got a vinyl top, right? Well, it it got converted to a vinyl top. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> we're getting a little hell of a story. All right, let's just start back. Okay, you it, tell the story. It, we uh we build this Tempest and it's got Hallman Moody Snout on it and then got Chevelle. Oh. It's got a short track, Hallman and Moody Snout. So is this your idea? I mean, you're building this car, and you decide to go from a stock frame to go, and you, you're going to put the snout on it, right? I'm going to – we even built a frame jig. Okay. So we could build a frame frame up, no – all tubular. Right. Probably one of the first tube chassis around. We have imagine. Yeah, and we raised the nose in the car. Okay. So – we wouldn't have to worry about tricking up the A-frames. We just raised the whole nose. Okay. So you guys are going to run this car. You're building this car to run? Short track. Same yeah. thing. Same deal you've been running? Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first time we run it, I think we carried it to Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, So how does that come about? You're building this car to run into <laughs> short track. You know, it's going to be a short track, and then you guys – what, what, may, what do you decide to go to? How's that work? I, I don't know who made the decision, but uh, Neil run Atlanta the year before uh, what they called an invitational race. Okay. In one of Bobby's Camaros. Okay. And I think he won it. I'm pretty sure he won it. Okay. 
So he wanted to go back on that invitation. Okay. Deal. We got invited. So. Okay. So you're in, you got this car and it's fresh. It's new. It's yeah. new. It's yeah. new. Yeah. It's new. Okay. So we take it to Atlanta and run second. Shouldn't have run second because <laughs> we had a quick change in it. Really? And you don't want to run a mile and a half racetrack with a quick change. You want to run it with a yeah. a Ford rear end. Right. We snapped off a couple of the bolts. It was a brand new rear end, but it was breaking the bolts. Okay. And uh, Lee Hurley climbed under the car during a pit stop and put bolts in there. No kidding. Anyway, we finished second. They made us tear the motor down. Pissed me off. Hmm. I really wasn't happy about that. Why? Well, uh, but we finished second. It was you had to tear the motor down if you're running top three. Okay, and why? Why did that bother you so bad? Just, just because uh, well, it's been a long week, and then I'm sitting there trying to tear a motor down, and I got you. It, yeah, it's, just not, not good timing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, but we finished second. Okay. So then we get the bright idea to run Charlotte. Yes. So we know that quick change ain't gonna work. So we put a Ford rear end in it. All right. Well, this first, car is orange in color. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, it was kind of a, a mustard looking color. Really, it mm. wasn't very pretty. But Corky designed all this paint okay. job and all. All right. All he right. did all this. Okay. We didn't do no paint work. Okay. Right. <laughs> so uh, we get up there, and the first thing they do is make us tear the fuel cell apart. Okay. To make sure it'll only hold 22 gallons of gas. All right. Well, we had it where it hold more than 22 gallons of gas. <laughs> so <laughs> they made you put two by fours in there. Okay, just to, fill the to space. To shrink it back up to 22 gallons. Okay. That was our first problem. All right. Second problem, they didn't check height like we check height here. Okay. They didn't run no stick under it. Okay. They had a limbo bar, and that top had to touch that thing. Okay. It wouldn't fit. <laughs> Too low. Okay. So we had to raise the car up, which changes a lot of stuff when you raise a car up. And Banjo got to talking to us, because at the time we were we were pretty competitive everywhere. And, 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 and he's hunting business, so you know, yeah, he's doing his thing. But if I remember correctly, butcher story. I'm gonna enter, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a butcher story here yeah. in a minute. Everybody was intrigued at the racetrack with this car. No, with, with the second car. I'm, I'm oh, getting okay. there. All right, good I'm deal. All right. Okay, come on then. So uh, I get to talking to Banjo, and he says, "You ain't gonna do no good with this car here." He was at Atlanta. Okay. He said, "You did good at Atlanta because you can run the car where you wanted to." Right. He said, "Your car ain't gonna keep up here." Okay. Because if they've raised you up two inches. Yep. Okay. And you ain't you ain't set up for that. Right. So he was right. We didn't run all that great, but we had to go back three times to run that race because it kept getting rained out. Okay. Uh, and yeah. that kind of started Neil's career because okay. while we were up there at Charlotte, we stayed for the cup race, and David Pearson got sick. Okay. And they put Neil in the car. Really? Yeah, they come hunted him up and put him in the car in the middle of the race. Wow. Uh, so that was really his first, first. So how does he do in the car? First real shot. Yeah. Well, he's listening to them. Okay. And I'm in the pits, too. I'm hearing what's going on. Okay. And uh, they let him run it for four or five laps, and he's coming back right through the pack like he's supposed to, and that, that car was bad fast. That's, that's a good hot rod. And he... He asked them, what do you want me to do? I said, Neil, if you can take it to the front, take it to the front. So he proceeds to go to the front. Wow. And he's running second, I believe, behind Baker. And he tries to make a move on Baker. And he spun it, spun out. it out. Wow. And after the race, he didn't hurt the car. I think, I think he finished the race. But after the race, I said, what happened? He said, I didn't realize that car was loose. He said, I was feeling a breeze coming through the window. Mm -hmm. But he said, I didn't really think it was loose. Okay. He said, it didn't feel loose. Right. And he said, when I got in there a little bit heavy, it just turned around. Wow. So <laughs> he, uh, that kind of started his career, though. 
Yeah, that was a that was a big opportunity to oh, to to be some guy, a local guy, <laughs> you know, and regionally known. I, I would say yeah. at that time, but then, you know, you would think there were a lot of other race car drivers around that Wood Brothers really had. Well, they they picked him. I, 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 I think it's. A, I mean, yeah, yeah and like a, you it said, was, it was a big break for him. Yeah, and they they uh, appreciated him from. From then on, like you said, because then he, he got the ride. He got the ride later yeah. on. Man. Wow! He, he drove for Harry Hyde first, and then he drove for the Woods Brothers. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but uh, so tell me about the car number two. So that car that that, that uh, so we <laughs> we bring the car back, and Neil started it. He cut the body off of it. Okay. And we put a later model Pontiac body on it. Okay. And we get. Uh, The guy that did all of Bobby's trick work, I remember. I can't remember his name now. Body wise, yeah, he did. Well, he did row bars. He didn't. He worked for Bobby for a long time. Was he a local guy? Well, he was local. I guess he, if he's still alive, he's still living here. But uh, he had moved from the Carolinas here to work for Bobby. Okay, yeah, I don't know. And he tricked this body all up. Okay. He knew how to get one ready for a super speedway because we were going to run Talladega. So, uh, didn't have no templates to fit that car. Oh. That's where the problem started. Okay. So, we bring the car to Talladega and it, it's pretty tricked up. It's a pretty bad looking car. Right. And uh, the officials didn't like it at all. Right. But they didn't have nothing to compare it to. Okay. So the next day they rented a rented one at the rental car place, <laughs> trying to compare it. And see, I played dumb because Neil was in the cup garage. Okay. And every time they quiz me about, I said, "Y'all need to talk to Neil. Mm -hmm. I just work on this thing." Yeah. <laughs> so we had decided how we were going to do this. So uh, we practiced the car, and I don't know what happened in the race. I don't even remember what happened oh, in the really? race. Yeah. We ran the race. And, yeah. But uh, uh, so what happens to this car after that race? Shortly after that, we kind of disappeared. Okay. I mean, we kind of was through. Yeah, you're, yeah, you were through at that point. And stuff. Uh, now, I think they took that car. I think Butch and Frankie took that car to Daytona. So how does Frankie Frankie get involved with you guys? Yeah, well, he got involved with Butch. He got involved with Butch. <laughs> He's going to. Split the cost. Okay. Yeah. He wasn't having too much success racing either. And yeah. He wanted to race, and so they they got. I don't know how that all worked. It worked out, but yeah. And then he went to the races with us. Yeah. And <laughs> and and Frankie was one of those guys that uh, again he wanted to plug in just to learn and get knowledge, you know. And uh, I guess you know at the time you guys were one of the leading teams. And, yeah. 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 And, we were. <laughs> and uh. And went on to have a storage career and built a lot of race cars and won a ton of races and stuff. And see, he called me several times when he started that thing. Yeah. I never called him back. Did you not? Yeah, you were done. Yeah. I knew what he's want. Okay, yeah. He want somebody to teach him a lot of stuff he didn't know. Right. Or figure out some stuff he didn't know. Right, you know? yeah. But I was outside salesman and I was out of town a lot. So that yeah. just didn't fit no more. Right. So... Let's go back and we're talking about Tom Glore. As you mentioned him briefly earlier about his uh his involvement in racing and stuff and I don't know who had the track before he took it over. But yeah. it was not very successful before he took it over. Right. And I don't know how many years he had it, but he made it work like a glove. Yeah. Everything was precision, on time, boom, 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 boom. People was out at ten o'clock unless we had a bad wreck. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was a noise problem. Ah, okay. The, yeah. na the neighbors didn't like the noise. Okay. And, and when he leased the track, he guaranteed he would be out of there by 10 or close. Okay, yeah. So they had everything lined up. And when 7 o'clock hit, the first one pulled on the track and another one was lined up ready to go. I mean, we was out of there a lot of times at 10 o'clock. Wow. And Quarter 10, 9.30. And then... <laughs> Again, I've, I've I've been around a long time and I've, I've heard Mr. Glory's name forever, but nobody that I've ever heard 
had anything derogatory to say about no, the man. No, he was he was straight up guy. He yeah. just told you like it was, and that, that was it. And this is yeah. how we're going to do it. Yeah. He had a lot of people working for him that worked at Glore. Yeah. When he okay. owned Tom Glore. Okay. Uh, so and they made. He was their boss there, and he was the boss at the racetrack. So they made things. Yeah, even the tech officials and yeah, all those guys were things, employees of, they, of his. They made things click right along. Wow, it is. That was, I, I would say that was a golden years for Bur for Birmingham oh, as a racetrack. Oh, they were packing the stands. Yeah, yeah. Just, and see, we confronted him about money several times. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you ain't paying us enough. Right. Uh, but, and, uh, well, good. And, and we finally got him to change the way to start. Yeah. Which put it put the cars that run good was at a disadvantage because they took your point average for three weeks, and that's how you started from the rear. Wow! So, so the guy that had the best point average for three weeks started dead last. Yeah, well, Cal hard to get to the front in twenty five laps. That's right, and caused a lot of casualties in with automobiles. <laughs> caused a lot of bumping and grinding. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, but it made a it made a hell of a show. <laughs> so d during your time there. Uh, I won't. I, I won't go regionally, but locally, who was uh, who was your biggest competitors? Who who did you have to race with the most, and who who did you have the best, the biggest rivalry with? Well, I guess Alton was probably the biggest rivalry to start out with. And yeah. Then, then he, like everybody, they fade out and come back. Somebody else comes back, and yeah. It was de it depended on who you had sponsoring you and who was building the cars. Uh, Everybody was hot at different times, I guess. You like you said, uh, found some technology or like you said, sponsorship or things uh, of that nature. Richard Orton had landed a sponsor that had a bunch of money. Yeah. Now they said he was a bookie or a chicken farmer. I don't know what he did and I didn't care. Right, yeah. But uh he paid around, man, to build two cars. Yeah. And they beat us pretty good for two or three weeks. Yeah. And then we caught up. Okay. So uh, you had to uh, round, go back, had to go back to work. <laughs> that's right, exactly. <laughs> well, Round Man was a. Uh, you spoke of him earlier too. He was a super talent. I uh, was a very smart guy. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. He goes way back further than I do. Yeah, yeah that's he, true. He was back in the really old days when they run late model modifieds. Yeah. Old model modifieds. And uh, again from the 60s, early 60s on. I mean, and his, his name is synonymous and just done a great, great job with a lot of great drivers and him and Alton coming together and same time period that you and Neil are together mm -hmm. and, and the racing is just really, really intense. And Butch tells me a story one night, he came back into the shop. You may be able to verify this, may not know, but Neil's up in front of the car welding a, a bar or something underneath the front bumper to give him more strength or whatever. And Butch asked him, says, what are you doing? He says, I'm building me a burger bar and I'm taking him out tonight. You know, <laughs> so. Uh, well, I know. They, had, they had several run-ins. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> burger, burger wasn't happy with Neil when we got to running real good. Yeah, that's, yeah. And yeah. Neil just told him, if I hit you 10 more times, I won't catch up. <laughs> <laughs> burger was rough yeah it was a burger, burger, he, he didn't have to be rough the right. car was good enough for him to win yeah without it yeah uh, that kind of ended a boy by the name of Rhea, Rhea Greenwell out of Huntsville had a Ford well in Huntsville Burger jacked him all around messed his car up okay well, he come to Birmingham and sent Burger in the wall wide open. Oh my! Demolished it. I think that's when Round and him parted ways. Okay, yeah, that was a. And Green was I didn't get mad. I just got even. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it destroyed Round's car. Wow. Yeah. Well. And that that's how stuff was done back then. Yeah, you settled it right there on the racetrack, right? Uh, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Well, this won't be our last segment. We're gonna we're gonna. Uh, <laughs> We're, we're going to develop this and uh, get it out to everybody, but then we're going to bring you back to some other point and All we're right. going to get some more in it. But I really, really thank you for taking your time today to come out and. I'm glad I still remember part of it. No, you've done a great job. No, you've done a great job. And it's. Because that's been a long time ago. Well, Anthony, I'll, I'll say this before we go. I've never spoke to anybody, whether 
who it was that didn't sing your praises as far as your talents and your commitment to be the best that you could be, you know, and it really showed, you know, and I want you showed for a while. Yeah. Well, you, you need to be proud. You know, I know that it don't get brought up a lot and that's the reason for this, this time today is for, for everybody to get a chance to hear from the guy that they had so much respect for, you know, and you're well respected and all, and always have been. So, uh, Again, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to sit here and spend this time with you today. I thank you for asking. All right. Well, good. We'll be back sometime soon. Thanks, guys.